I was a very successful lawyer and I loved my job. So when I came, I started work as a beautician, like facials and beauty stuff. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, the Noongar Wadandi Mort. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Scratch the surface and everyone has a story. Welcome, Kaya, to the Wisdom of Women. Today's guest is an inspiration in following your dreams. Mm -hmm. We welcome Ati Sadigi, who came to Australia 10 years ago. But Ati, it was a challenge in your new home. Yes. Tell us about the whole start of your journey. Oh, <laughs> it was very, very tough decision to make because both my husband and I, we had a very successful life back in Iran. And then he has had something from nowhere and then he made a decision that we're going to Australia. That was so hard and so just happened and difficult to make a decision, but we've made it and we came. And you came. So there was nothing going on um, in the background of Iran in that sense at the time. It was much more about opportunities for you. Yeah, for him in advance. And because we've been married like for times, many years before that and friend together. So I couldn't let him just come mm. by himself. Yeah. And I always was thinking about migrating out of Iran with the situation that we had. So... I was positive. I, I, I was looking at to it like a good opportunity. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the background of your life in Iran. What, what are some of the things that you thought, oh, maybe we could be better off in Australia? <laughs> yeah, so back in Iran, I studied law. That was something that I always wanted to do. And I, I mean, turned out to be a very good lawyer. I was a very successful lawyer and I loved my job mm -hmm. and I started like it with full of excitement and good things. Mm -hmm. But after a few years, all the stress about the job and a little bit restri restrict rules I can say, I'm not saying against women, but mm -hmm. a few of them was, uh, was making me that, oh, it's going to be hard to be a lawyer in Iran and in countries that the, most of the rules, I'm not saying it's against women, but it's not 100% for women. Mm -hmm. That Iran or other Muslim countries is one of them. And uh, Was it rare for you to be a woman and be a lawyer? In Iran? Like, were you a, a small percentage of practicing lawyers? Yeah. I, I'm making a small print, print is here that it's a question for everyone. Even first time our landlord, the family that we lived with them for three years, when I said her, I have a master's degree in law, he, mm. she said, she asked me, where did I study? And I said, in Iran. And she said, are you allowed to go to university? So in Iran, we have one of the big rate is of the students going to university. So yeah. when you finish high school, you have to finish high school. Mm. And when you finish high school, 90, 80 percent of people, boys or girls, they going to university. So it's an interesting <laughs> misconception, isn't it, that we do yeah. have when we would think Iran, oh my goodness, restrictions. Yeah. But that is not the case. Now, so education is a big priority for your is. home country. And especially for ladies and women because mm. most of the boys... When they go to university, definitely they have a very good job opportunity, but they can make a better money when they go to do business. Yeah. But for girls to just go and better get better jobs, definitely for them the best opportunity to be successful in the community and to, to or society, it's better to go to university. Mm. And because the competition is so high yeah, so even bachelor is not enough. So you go to bachelor and then you say, oh no, I still I can't find a good job. You do mm. master and then you have to go further to have a PhD to be like a high rated. So the education is something very demand. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And not hard definitely to study law, mm. but very difficult to be a lawyer. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so and what, what is your husband's profession? So how did his opportunity for his, um, you know, furthering his career Ash is a GP, he's a doctor, plus mm. that a psychologist. And from a friend of him, he has heard about something that they used to call it sexology mm -hmm. or sexual health. 
Oh yes. And then he was looking at it and he said, "Oh, it's what is it?" And then I love to do it and it's so interesting. And it's something uh, still after all these years that we've been here and he finished it. Still something very new. When you say to people, he's a sexologist, they say, what, psychologist? Oh, I say, yes. no, sexologist. We've, we've all gone, ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they say, oh, yeah, what's that? <laughs> yeah. It's something like that exists. Who are they? So mm. they're the doctors or nurses or psychologists that they help people for their sexual health. Yeah, okay. So that's what he wanted to study. Mm. And then we were looking at it, there was, there is a still not many universities that they teach that mm. degree, especially yep. in master and PhD, except I think a few colleges in UK, okay. one good university in USA, I don't know where is it, and then a university in Sydney and Curtin University in WA. So we well, said, yay, Australia yeah, is definitely the best option. That's a bit special. And because, we're lucky to get you in WA. Oh, thank you. And Always, Australia was one of the countries that I always was thinking I definitely one day would love to migrate. Oh. Yeah. So you pack yourselves up. Was it sad leaving family? Uh, very. But we had one year before coming to Australia when we applied to get the certifications, like some assessments being proved, approved, or just like doing our English tests or mm. the other things. And Ash made, Ash is my husband, <laughs> so he was, uh, I mean, he made this decision, he's so smart, that what if we go and live in another country next to Iran for one year, to be still close to our country, mm. but get a little bit further from parents and to get used to be far from Away. everyone, because... In Iran or, I don't know, Middle East countries or, you know, in a smaller countries, not, I'm saying, Westerners, families, they all, like, <laughs> block mm. together, you know? Yeah, and you just, close. like, you're close. You, you never get out of your family's <laughs> house, yeah. live by yourself before you get married. And even you get married, like, you just get married, you rent a house or you buy a house, it's still for all the lunch and dinners you're living with your parents. Oh, <laughs> your mom that. cooks and they call, <laughs> oh, honey, what do you have for lunch? Nothing, come oh, over. Oh, come are on. you guys, yeah, are you guys coming back from work? Yeah, do you have dinner? No, mom, I'm going home to cook. No, come here, oh, I made something. So it's always, you, you're always with your parents, even uh, though you get married. So we yeah. were very close, especially my mom, I was very close to my mom and my sister, and I never thought that I could be separate from them. So we, le uh, we left Iran, and we went to Armenia for one year, mm -hmm. lived there. So it was so close, like 45 minutes for our parents to come oh, over right. by nice. like fly, yeah. a flight. Yeah. And it was a nice holiday for them. Every day, now every two, three months, they were coming and staying with us, visiting us, and again go back, and we were going to Iran. So we made it like this in advance to see how we go, mm. and I think it worked a lot, yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah. And how long has it been since you've seen? So we were in Armenia in 2013, went back to Iran, celebrate the new year, that we call it No Rules, our new year, and then got packed and you imagine your whole life for I was 32 years old you have to put all of the things that you have in one baggage that has to be 25 kgs mm -hmm. no that's ridiculous and yeah. go to the airport and go to a country that you've never been you don't have any families or relatives or even friends and you don't know even how cold or warm or not imagine. No, we just saw a few cartoon series in our childhood about Australia, all the beautiful islands, yeah. beaches yeah. and kangaroos and has no idea because <laughs> it's many years ago, like it wasn't even like that much on Google or like all of these informations mm. or group chats that we have now in all the medias. There was not much information, not you know. So where did you land? Did you come straight to Perth or did you go over east? To Perth, yeah, yeah, we just came to Perth because Ash uh, got the, I mean, got the opportunity and approval from Katie University because he was from a very good university, graduated from one of the best medical universities in Iran, that is Tehran University. So as soon as he put the application for the master's degree in sexology, in, I think in four months he got it. So we got here on 29th April, <laughs> 7 p.m., oh <laughs> from a city that at 11 
p.m. you go out, you get a stuck in the traffic, 12 million <laughs> population, yes. and then you come to past 7 p.m. in April, <laughs> dark, nothing dead, going on, nothing going on, and <laughs> we were both shocked, like from airport to the house that we were going, the suburb was close to Katyn, we were holding each other hands <laughs> in the taxi, and I was saying, mm -hmm. Are we in Paris or is it... Where are we? A first world country that we are coming <laughs> and Very different. Another planet. Oh, yeah. But that's the, the morning tomorrow was... Oh, now we reached to... Do we have time? Yeah. I'm very oh, yeah. talkative. No, no, go. So we got to the... I mean, to the, the people. So the things that we did, I was thinking that because we don't have any family and we don't have any idea where are we going or what we're doing <laughs> so Kerting University had a list of families Australian families that they home stay uh, yes. so yeah. people a student international students they can go and live with them mm. they feed you for the breakfast and dinner yeah. and then they give you a house and if you need some help like drop off somewhere or yeah. go and then they show you city they give you some intent like you know in help information you help you exactly for mm. a month till you find yourself <laughs> <laughs> and we were one of the luckiest students because the family that we we found they like they are australian parents still yeah. they were like a beautiful soul wife and husband yeah same age of my parents oh, that's and lovely. they had like a big house very close to Kerton University. One of those, I think their house was 80 years old. Big yeah. houses that you were stepping up like the duplexes. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. And our house was like on the, it's, I don't know what do you call it, like the roof mm -hmm. on oh, the top. The yeah. 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 And then a big like master bedroom. And all the house, the guy was very artistic. So he was making all his like steps with the jar, all their oh, house wow. cupboards yes, or the beautiful. libraries that or the shelves that he, they had. He made them all with jar. And they were just like a beautiful soul. So they were like everywhere we go following us and taking us to everywhere. And just but like everywhere you looked, it just must have been so different it was so, so different because the house that we used to live as you know it was in level 11 in a tower so we had because in in my hometown that's the other thing it's a big city yeah. it's an urban city like towers buildings highways for 10 million population it's a very modern city uh, yeah. so ta like they just making and building more towers and like tunnels mm. for the traffic to stop and you know shopping centers open till 10 11 restaurants yeah. they open till y and 1 a.m so it's like a big city you know and we were from there and you turned up to this that must have been it was like a holiday <laughs> house for us like yeah. a villa or a yeah. holiday like airbnb you go and rent mm. it wasn't at mm. all like an astral first world country we're going to you know yeah. and how did you go with english and picking up because Aussies are renowned Excellent. for speaking as, you know, we've got our lingo, so yeah. to speak. So, uh, yeah, how did you go with the language? So, Rick, the guy he had, like, first night, you know, the, I, I don't know, still after 10 years, I have a difficulty to understand male accents in here, ah. especially the ones that they come from a small villages. They have a very hard <laughs> language yeah. to understand. Oh, oh, yeah, oh my God. Voice, yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> And Rick was one of them. All their slangs, like yeah. ninety percent, he was just using a slang. Uh. <laughs> but Kate, the That's lady, terrible. she she was working. I mean, she used to have a job at airport. She was interviewing uh, international passengers that they mm. were leaving Australia and ask about their experience in Australia or this and that. And she was uh, speaking very nice and clear. So first night was good because at least we could understand her. Yeah. My English was all right. I don't know if it is. Is it all yeah, right? No, it's great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was all right because English is our second language. And yes. since my childhood, I was always going to the institutes and speaking. Mm. Ash had a little bit more difficulties because he's always on library and more on medical books. Yeah. So his professional English is here like... Mm an academic but like um, I I was quicker and better than understanding than him because I did more conversation or 
like more social sort social of interaction with exactly. people, which helps, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah with all that. But it still was so hard, yeah, to understand, yeah, especially at the university with the tutors and classmates and things. So yeah. that night with them was beautiful. We slept and we woke up after many, many years with the sounds of birds. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> we woke up, we opened our eyes and their house, they had like a big, big, big backyard full of flowers and trees, a swimming pool in the middle. Like, I don't know, their house like is so big. Mm. Yeah, because their house has eight bedrooms. It was like, wow. when they sold it, they could build, build, three blocks out of it oh, so it was a huge house yeah, yeah unfortunately they knocked it off oh, no. yeah two years ago yeah but jay how wonderful you, for you to have that experience it was amazing the sounds of birds yeah just imagine instead of like you wake up in a big city every Tracking day they're knocking down a building yeah. building another one uh-huh. streets roads this that so yeah, just wake up with something like that. And uh, still since then, I, every morning I'm waking up with the birds. Oh, you cool. know, that is beautiful. Yeah, 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 that's why I like even Bombay weather than Paris. Yeah, yeah. weather yeah. same. Yeah. 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 And it's and something traffic. that you don't notice it mm. till you leave. You know, mm. when I say it, everyone is saying, yes, mm. we never think about it. You wake up I with the know. rain sounds. or Because all of our houses, they they make the windows and doors and everything so strong with layers of like anti-sounds or oh, of course. Uh, so like a smoke yeah. because they're big cities so they make like all the walls and mm, glasses or mirrors or mm. what do I call like Double everything like is yeah. more isolated to, yeah, to take the wow. sounds and smoke not coming to the house. So See, I hadn't thought about no. things yeah. like that before. Yeah, but in yeah. here you just wake up everywhere you sleep. Like we can hear the next door neighbour yelling. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or dogs, wow. yeah, they're barking. Dogs barking and that is like that. for us. It's still after nine years. Every morning I wake up. It's like I'm living my life always wow. for holidays. That is beautiful. To it hear is that. beautiful. So you settle in uh, for was it almost a year with your with your Our first visa. Australian parents. <laughs> no, we supposed to be with them for one month and then uh, because our contract was for one month and they're expensive okay. because, um, I mean, it's very more expensive than you rent a house or you pay, like, okay. you have your own things. Yeah. But because we had a beautiful experience and we wanted to be with them and they were so happy to do it. So we added another month to stay with them okay. and then month three <laughs> and then they said, Oh, we guys love you and you're more than welcome if you want to stay longer because their house was big. They, all three that kids, they were married and they always needed someone like a student or someone to stay there. And then one day they came and they said, we have a good news for you guys. We bought a house. We're moving to Mandra. A house in an S3, like a, with a big yeah. view oh. of S3. And we're done with the city life oh. and we're going to ask you guys if you're happy you rent the house from us there we go <laughs> so and we love that How house perfect. but that was a huge house yeah. so it was so big for two of us mm, okay. and expensive definitely for the rent but they offered us some something very good because they had a cat old cat that they didn't want to move her out oh. so they said you, you look after baby. this <laughs> definitely we take the dog and then if you guys are happy, you share it with one or two more university mm. students. Mm. And then we did it for another eight months, but the house was so big. And as I was studying full time, I started to look out for a job. So it was so hard to look after all those plants. Mm. It was taking me two hours in summer oh, wow. to water the pots that's, and plants. Yeah, That's not practical really is it and the swimming pool was in the middle of the garden it was beautiful to swim in it but cleaning it was a taking lot. a yeah. lot of time so yeah after a few months i thought it's too much for us and yeah. then yeah but we had heaps of parties gatherings <laughs> with the friends all the friends they yeah. love to come and stay yeah. with us and have parties next to the swimming pool That's and the house so was huge yeah i love it yeah. so you moved out 
we moved out because I found a job at Garden City Borogun Shopping Center mm-hmm. as a beautician at- assistant. So, so let's talk about your work situation. So <laughs> what happened because you're Being a, lawyer. a qualified lawyer <laughs> in Iran and suddenly now yeah. you're in Australia. I don't know if I say it's sad or good. I say it's good. Mm. Maybe now I look at it, but it was sad. Uh, we we have a law that it comes from Romo German law that is from France, and it's a mixture of Islamic l- law and France law. Mm. But in you, I mean, in Commonwealth countries, yes. we have the law from Britain yeah. that yeah. is Anglo-Saxon law. So it's hundred percent different. Right. So when right. we were coming here, as sh- one day came to me and said, "Honey, I know that you love. We're going to Australia, but you should know that you won't be able to practice law anymore there because it's not recognized you there. Mm. If you want to start, you have to start and go to university, and study law from the beginning. That is six years. In okay. Iran, was the yeah. same. And he said to me, "Would you do it? Would you like to do it?" But even so, the other things that made it easy for me, even in Iran a few years before coming, I stopped being a court lawyer. Yeah, okay. Because it's always hard, you know, it was hard. Most of the judges, they men. Mm-hmm. And then the, I don't know if you know mullah, they you know how we have priests here in yeah. Islam, they have mullah. So mullah. most of them, they like them. They religion graduated men mm-hmm. that they know more religion than even law okay and they're judging mm. and that was something that always the lawyers in iran they were fighting that we know law even more than a judge that is sitting on the top level mm. and to prove the law to someone that is looking mostly on the religion a part of aspect aspect mm. And especially with the women, a few restrictions like you have to cover your hair, yeah. have the scarf and hijab when you're going yeah. to the court. Sometimes you have to have chador, that is the black long one on the top, no hair out, no yeah. makeup. Yeah. And when it gets to the custody, when it gets to the wheels, always we men, they have double chance, double, mm. like if mm. you're if you have a brother, if your parents die, the brother gets double of the sister. Yep. If you, if the kid that die, the dad's father has more right to have the baby in custody yeah. than the mom. Mm. It's just like the things that I get goosebumps. Yeah, yeah that is sometimes heartbroken, mm. especially if you're a good lawyer. You win the cases, but sometimes it's unfair that it, you know that it's unfair, but you win it. Or sometimes you're mm. fighting, but you never would be a winner. When, now being in Australia mm-hmm. and experiencing Australian law, mm-hmm. and clearly there's no religious aspect to it. No. It is very much a judicial system. Yeah. Do you look at, at back at, at home and think, oh... It's interesting. Do you question more the aspect that religion has so much dominance in the legal system? I, to be honest, I don't have that much information about Australian laws. But whatever I see, I'm not saying 100% of everything was false or Mm. bad or not Mm. right, you know. Many things was, to be honest, better than our laws that we have here, like the divorce rules or laws. Yes. In Iran, you agree to get divorced you go you have two witnesses each side you go and sign the paperwork financial ones if you want you do it together deal together same day done in here Mm. the divorce like process takes ages yeah it does yeah and you have to Legally separate. Oh, before you can even apply. Takes, oh. I have customers that mm. they've been in court for the divorce and financial things mm. for four mm. years. And mm. it's a headache. You can't move on, you no, know. No, you can't yeah. under that. Can but in, I don't know. A few laws, yeah. to be honest, because it's not all from Islam. You know, many mm. of them, they're from Roma German law. That is a very strong law. Yeah, okay. so I, I love it. So about checks about financial things so many of things that is there to be honest the law is stronger than mm-hmm. yeah. the law or better than here okay but and 
and it's I think more flexible with our low than Australia here gets more restrictions and a few of the other part I was a civil lawyer right. like mostly about properties checks wills mm -hmm. custody and something like that criminal law I I never could be a criminal lawyer Anyway, I was so good in criminal subjects at the university, oh, really? but I didn't want to be didn't a criminal. Go that way. No, because it's I don't know. I'm not saying I'm very, very, very emotional, so I couldn't deal with. Hmm. Yeah, Some you of the, know. The cases yeah, that yeah. There's a whole criminal system and, and justice system that is just so different. I think so. You you walked away from law anyway because you decided you weren't going to do the extra study so what made you go into what you're doing now mm -hmm. so I, I i don't know i i always in iran makeup is something very demanding if you're going out to buy a bottle of milk you wear red lipsticks you wear makeup ah, you have lashes we all, on we all love a bit of red you lipstick get, <laughs> yes. you get dressed up you know it doesn't matter where are you going you get dressed up and makeup done and i was always good in makeup mm. and hair when we were going out like i was always doing my mom's hair makeup oh, nice. my auntie's like hair and i don't know i was always loving it a part mm. of my character yeah. as well yeah so when i said me that this is going to happen to you and you won't be able to practice even like the financial law or whatever you're doing mm -hmm. here now. That was a very good job, very big income. And just think mm. that, oh, I'm going to Australia to be what? And he said, even maybe do pedicure for people or manicure or body massage or something that mm. you always had someone to do it for you and now you have to do it for people and being paid can i say your mom and aunties and that must have <laughs> missed you even more so because you went there to do the hair and makeup yeah, i know yeah and it was a hard decision because you know living and my my dad i'm from i'm not saying very rich but mm. a wealthy family mm -hmm. and my husband was a doctor so even our incomes after being married was so good so our mm. life itself was so good mm. so it was hard you know i had to like choose something that still be a good job yeah. because i i'm not saying it's something bad but i couldn't find myself to come here and just be i don't know i thought like as a cleaner or like i don't know i didn't you, want something you had definite ideas though about what you did want to do yeah with oh, your time. I, and i was saying i studied all these years i i lived yeah. all right and hard and i'm going to gain something good but i don't want to do everything you know i yeah. don't know maybe i don't know it's the culture we brought up it's like uh I'm not now I'm 100% different. Mm. I did babysitting. I yeah. I did everything. Like I was babysitting for my boss for a few months. Yeah. And I helped my friends even clean their house, not being paid definitely, but <laughs> yeah. I was bo like um raised up always with a mate, my own private mate, mm. having at home servants always doing things for us. Mm drivers taking us to the school this, Gee, what a change of lifestyle and yeah, you imagine no yeah and then you have no. to go i've somewhere. always had to make From my own bed that. scrub my own floors <laughs> <laughs> i can't imagine. even i lived a few years in dubai with my brother and we had mates there yeah. heaps of like filipinos they mm. worked there and they lovely people that yeah so it's so difficult so you decide you're going to go into the beauty industry so I thought beauty would be the best and something that I'm interested and yes. like to do. Mm. Yeah. So I did a beauty therapy diploma yes. with TAFE that they had like an academy in Tehran, my hometown, and a skincare one. Mm -hmm. So I had something that, oh yeah, if I'm go to Australia yeah. and I started like to practice at home and mm. have like, not customers, hold the families yeah. coming. I was doing facials for them, nails, this, that. To just get more experience as a prof mm. beauty beautician, as a professional. Well, it's a great industry in that it is so flexible as well because you it can is. set up at your home, go to people's places. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah I was doing easy. that. I had like mm. a beautiful kit that I was going to my auntie doing her facial, like yeah. a bed, flexible mm. bed, like portable that I could oh. take it everywhere, foldable. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Could take it everywhere. Mm. So, yeah, I did it a few months and in Armenia I had... An Armenian, we had an 
an Iranian friend that his wife was Armenian. So she was doing nails as well. So I was, she showed me something about nails. So doing man- manicure, pedicure together mm. for her friends. Mm. So I got experience about one year or more before coming to Australia. Yeah. Mm. And when I came here, my first best job ever was a beautician at a barber shop, fancy barber shop oh, in wow. Fremantle. Nice. I had the beauty room to do facials and grooming and body waxing and manicure for male. And you loved it? The best job ever in my life. Oh, really? Yeah. Working with males. Oh my God. So nice. And I was like my income was I think eighteen or twenty dollars an hour mm. and I was getting tips like thirty dollars, fifty dollars, oh. eighty dollars. Oh, <laughs> love it. And they would say, you. Oh that's the best facial I ever had. They always treat you nice mm. and they were so welcoming, that's so nice. nice. Oh, where is this sexy accent from? You're so pretty <laughs> to be a musician. <laughs> All right, and what do you want me to be? <laughs> but most of them they were gentlemen, like yeah. rich guys because the barbershop was very fancy one, mm-hmm. old fashioned ones. Mm. Okay. And then no, that was a good place and the best customers yeah, ever. And how was your husband settling into the study and mm. you know, how was he going with it all? <laughs> so very difficult. Mm. Still okay. has been. Yeah, because for us everything has started from zero. I think mm. he was more brave than I was because he knew that he has to start from zero as well. Mm. So you imagine eight years medical university, two years professional to be a psychologist and you're not recognized even as a GP. So he did a few months uh, English course and he was the only international student at his like, I mean, um, I mean, in between of his classmates Mm -hmm. and all the uh, I mean, teachers, they were Australian as well, the mm. new university professors. And two of them, they were gay. Mm-hmm. And in advance, one of them, he didn't like Ash because we're from Muslim countries. And in Muslim countries, gay people, they're illegal or they can kill them. Mm. But Ash was a doctor. He He came here to study sexology, to go back and help his people, you know? Yes. And he's very open-minded, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, and again, I think it's all this, um, you know, I don't know, in doctrine sort of beliefs or cultural yeah. ideas that people yeah. hold on to um, and they don't fully understand no, or take yeah. someone for who they are. Yeah, I yeah. know. For mm. him, it was so difficult and very expensive for us because compared to our money, because Iran has been under sanctions Europe and USA sanctions for many years because of the government Mm. so our money here was nothing so whatever we had we had to change it to dollars that like you imagine a billion of dollar Mm -hmm. and then bring it to Australia then it's gonna be 300,000 yeah okay that like so it was a I'm fraction of, of <laughs> yeah. what it was worth. That's it. Yeah. So we thought, like, oh, no, selling everything doesn't work because money comes and goes. So we needed mm. a big money in advance. That was one of the other things that it was all right to start because you have to pay for two years insurance in advance as a student. Mm. That was $5,000 for both of us. Oh, okay. Because we don't get Medicare as the students. Yeah, of course. Then he had to pay for his one year university that was about one hundred twenty. Mm-hmm. One course of English and one hundred for his two semesters. That was I think sixty thousand something for international oh, that's students. It's a lot of money that you'd have to find before you've really even started yeah. then. And then Plus that, uh, definitely other things, books and these and mm. that you have to pay. And then the food and the accommodation and whatever. Mm. And then the visas, <laughs> oh, everything just on the top of this. So you yeah, say you n- we needed about 100, I think 20,000 just before coming to Australia. That is even a lot of money for Australian. Yes, yeah. oh, a huge amount of money. It is. Yeah. So we started from there. So and it was impossible to live with our money that comes from back home, from mm-hmm. my money or mm-hmm. his. Like our house was renting. So that was why I said to him, I'm not looking at going there and study. So you study, mm-hmm. 
and I kind of watch. You, you get the job. Yeah. Bring the income in. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. since 2014, I've been still the breadwinner. <laughs> Kudos to you. Well done. <laughs> Yeah, my friends are saying, you're right. investing on Ash. It's okay. Yes. One day he's going to be He'll a return. GP and a, yeah, and a specialist as well as the GP yeah. and gives all the money back to Has you. Has he finished studying? He did master, but he didn't end up. Then he wanted to do more research as an PhD. And then at the end of the day, he found out still after finishing all those degrees, he's not eligible to work till he gets... Uh, the, they call it all the international GPs, doctors they have to go to a few exams to be Australian registered doctors so yeah. he still to do that? yeah, yeah. I wish he, instead of doing sexology he was studying medical university from the beginning because by now it was he all would have been finished yeah finished. And, yeah practicing so he has done many but uh, still two more to go Two more years. Yeah, exams. So two more years. Two more you? exams. Two, oh, two more exams. Yeah. Okay. Um, and amongst all, amongst all this as well, then you applied for permanent residency. Mm -hmm. That's been a bit of a journey as well for you. How, how difficult that process? So as I mentioned, living as an international student and people is always pricey in Australia. And because... We were on his uh, student visa. He had to keep studying yeah. to have the visa to uh, stay, you know, yeah. till he finishes and gets a doctor and then gets yeah. a permanent residency. That could take six years, five years, eight years. And then just by chance, I got like a job opportunity from Paris to Bum in Bunbury. Mm -hmm. The owners, they offered me that, are you happy to move down to down south? We're looking at to open a franchise in Bunbury. And there is nowhere in Bunbury or down south who does the service. So one of the other things that I have started and is something very unique. I was the first <laughs> beautician who officially started trading in down south. So I was doing threading. Have you heard yeah, about threading yeah, with the cotton yeah, thread? Yeah. So when I came, I started work as a beautician, like facials and beauty stuff. And then one day, the lady that we were living with, Kate, said to me, have you seen, I, I was doing like my own chain. And she said, oh, I've seen this in, there, there is just like a business that they just started at like, I don't know, carousel or somewhere. There are a few Indian ladies, they're doing this and they charge people so expensive. You should yeah. do it. And I said, oh, it's threading nice. here. Specialized, isn't it? It so is. Not everybody can. You can't just do it. You yeah, can, no. I've seen, I've seen videos yeah. of yeah. it. I've never experienced. No, it. you it should. It's painful though. Oh, it so is a little bit painful, but definitely too much gentle, more gentle than waxing. Mm, and yeah. yeah, if you don't know it, when you see it, it's harsh and it looks scary. But when you get it done. When you see the result, you never get back to the wax. Yes. <laughs> so you brought that down here to the south. So that was the thing, yes. Yeah, so I worked at the f at Fremantle Barbershop for a few months, but it was a casual job, mm -hmm. like a few hours every week. And then I start. And then when the lady said about that business, I started to look up and see who are they. Is that like a company or a business? And I found, yeah, that's a big company that has heaps of shops around, like. WA, uh, okay. like the franchise. franchises. Yep. So I applied for one of them that was, I mean, a lady who put like a, an advertisement. I think, I, I can't remember even where was it. So I just filled the form and I was just like, keep applying for the jobs, like something mm. to find to do full time, yeah. not casual. Yeah. And then the lady contacted me and then I went and saw her and her husband. They had a franchise of Zubia's Threading that was like a very big threading company. They were the first, I think, threading company in WA that started like ah. be, um, threading officially. Yeah. So uh, the big company, this, this wife and husband, they had one of their franchise. They weren't the company owners. One of the franchise that they had a shop in Garden City. Now it's Buragon, called Buragon mm. now. Yeah. So, and then they said, oh, your, your English is so good and you know threading. And, it, you know, they, they wanted someone who knows 
Mm-hmm. English good and because it was like it was very something as silly is like something that everyone doesn't know it. So when I was applying as a beautician, so we have heaps of Australian beautician. They don't need me like I still like with another language speaking, you know, because but, I was. But you bought the unique skill. So yeah, yeah but training. that one was something like that was demanding, you know. Mm. That was why when I was applying for all the beauty stuff, like as a beautician, I wasn't getting yes. But as soon as I applied for this job, I got it mm. as a full time job in a small kiosk bar in Garden City. Mm. So in two weeks, I was like full time. So first two weeks, wow. just part time. And week three, I was like full time. And because my English was good, I was a beautician as well as like knowing threading. And then I was, I think, the oldest stuff that they had as well because the other ones, they were younger. And because I had, like, a background of, like, educated and studying and, like, I don't know, they said you have the personality to even manage the business. The owner was pregnant. So in, I think, month two, I was supervisor and month four I was the selling manager. Like you one were of the moving through quickly. I know, you? one of the biggest, like oh. the best franchises. Yeah. I was managing it, yeah. Amazing. And then in, I think, two years and two or two and a half, they offered me, now you're all good to have your own shop. Are you happy and open if we open a franchise in Bunbury? Because there are heaps of Indians and Iranians or Nepalis who do threading, does threading in Paris, but there is no one in down south. And we trust you and you manage our selling for two years. Mm. Now, would you be open to move and have your own shop? Less stress, better people, less traffic of customers. Oh, you're a winner there. <laughs> and oh, no. if we go good and the business works out, we sponsor you to get the Australian permanent residency. Oh. So that was amazing opportunity for us, yeah. you know. So, but I didn't know where is Bunbury or <laughs> Bunbury exists. <laughs> <laughs> so we came one day morning, got to the road, came down to Bunbury. And went around, and in five minutes, the city was finished. Yeah. Yes. And I said, oh, it's that 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 it? <laughs> <laughs> And no one around. And then we went to Ocean Drive and to the, uh, the end and came, and we're sitting on the sands. And I said, I love here. Oh, really? It's so quiet. It's so beautiful. Mm. I love, I, I fell in love with the beaches. Yes. Yeah. And so qu- quiet. Yes. And we went to the shopping center. We went and in and then out. Oh, that's all. Mm. And I called them, it's very small here. You sure <laughs> that you want to open a shop here? <laughs> and they said, yes. I said, there is no one even walking around in, well, I think it was a Wednesday or Thursday. That is like a, mm. because 10 years ago, you imagine, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, you're right. Oh, no, sorry, ago. seven seven years ago, it's, 2016. It's so, yeah. Where? Where, where were you looking at So the kiosk is located in the middle of uh, OPSM and um, OPSM and Athletic Food at Forum. Oh, Do you yes. know where is Big W? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Forum Shopping Centre. Yeah, yeah okay. it's a mobile shop and I'm in the middle next mm. to it. Yeah, mm. so we opened it and people that were walking past. What is this? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh. No idea. People, they didn't know even trading exists. No. Or what is trading? We were in class and say, ah, what's awesome that? Awesome to watch. And they were, yeah, they were looking. Is it painful? How? Oh. They were just looking and people, yeah. because it's an open shop. I think the, the business, like the company is like creator was so uh, smart because they knew it's something very new mm. in Australia. Mm. So all of their shops, they open kiosks in the middle of like express express shops in the middle of shopping centers because it's taking the attention, you know. Mm. They want people to stop and yeah. have a look and question. Still, still after seven years, I get customers that it's their first time <laughs> to try, you know. Yeah, They've yeah, never yeah. seen it or tried it. So I started it like day one, two customers that they one experience it in Vietnam, one in UK. Day two, three customers, and month we started October 16, and January I had all five shares full, one assistant oh. and a queue of 
waiting customs. Wow, there you go. And now it's just consistent. Still has yeah. been like yeah. every year gets more. I have three forests of eyelash extension experts, facial experts. And I'm training now Australian girls because since COVID, we couldn't get anyone in mm, who knows trading. No more Indians or Iranians around. So, so, so life is good. Yeah, good. I started to train them and now have more assistant. And I've got my sponsorship started in 2017 or 18. But unfortunately, I was refused first time. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, no, it's not a demand <laughs> job that yes, for, she for could get. Okay. Exp- like we could have because my job position was hair and beauty salon manager. So the government was saying you can go and hire anyone Australian while mm. you need an immigrant mm. to, to do the job. To do the job. Yeah. So we applied again. We made a complaint, we applied again. So we appealed that one and we did once more and a new application, like a fresh one. And second time in nine months, again was refused. Mm. And this time they said some other like different things. Similar, but just a little bit like again, like just like being very fussy and mm. stingy. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, yeah you can still. have, yeah, you yeah. can have someone else to do it and then it doesn't need to no trading or that and this and it's a franchise the owner could manage it even she doesn't he doesn't need a manager so we fought for it like and each time like we applied each time application we applied it cost us about 18 to 20 thousand oh my goodness and both they were refused 8 thousand to 10 thousand for the appeal Mm -hmm. And by the same time, you imagine the students' fees, Mm. the life fees. Mm -hmm. So, so far, the money that we pay to the government and to universities, like things, uh, students' fees or other things, we could have bought this business that has sponsored me three times. Mm -hmm. I I could have done it and just run a business, help the economy better. Or buy a house, you know, instead oh, of just wasting well, all wow. this money We're and a stress. So we, we prepared everything. We had a lawyer as well. So we all sat and he asked a few questions like, how many years did you work? What are you doing? Mm. What's your job? And how you manage this business? How you're training people? I'm training Australians. And the owner was saying, she know, she's a beautician. She knows trading and she's a manager because I have a... Uh, I have a diploma, an advanced diploma in leadership and management as mm-hmm. well. So he said he is doing three jobs plus all the rostering, accounting, banking, everything that is for this business, she's doing it. If I want to hire someone, I have to hire three people to fulfill for that a role. small business in Bombay to fill these job roles. Mm-hmm. And she's doing it all. I can hire someone Australian. Yeah, I can. But I have to hire three people to cover all these jobs. And she's training, she, I get new people, she's training them all. And he has now, because Zubias terminate, the, the, big, the big company, now they have their own seven franchises in Paris and Bombay. Right. These, I mean, owners that I'm working as still with. So he said, and I have my other five, six businesses in Paris. So she's doing everything for this business as her child since the beginning. I even don't know how many customers she has. It's just money that comes to my bank account. The rest is by her. Even people, they don't know him or her. Like, they come to Bunbury and my customers, they ignore them. They say, who are they around? In, you know, because I've been here. And you know how small yes. is Bunbury? Everyone yeah. knows. Nice. In the shopping center, when they are they're around people, they go, who are they? I say, they're the owners. They even don't know I'm not the owner because yeah. I look after that business always like, have the responsibility yeah. so, and ownership. So finally, it was an argument that won you your residence. Yeah, the the judge was amazing. He was like a very so my lawyer said you your case was so strong and he was beautiful as well because he said they could be nasty, ask for more or say no. Mm-hmm. But uh, something that made me so proud at the end, he was saying me he didn't say it in advance. We had two hours meeting. He asked about all the details what do you do, how do you train, how much money is this business making, to make sure you're on the right position and mm. everything is 
it's not fake or fraud or anything. Yeah. They have to because in past many people they did it, run mm. like a business to sponsor migrants or make yeah. money out of it. Yeah. So they, I think they right, you know, to do it and be careful. But for me, it was going so unfair. Yeah. Both time, I mean, they refused me very unfair. They could have asked all these questions like six years ago, mm. instead of I spent all this stressful time, mm. because as as like a student visa on a student visa, I couldn't even have a mobile on the plan because I was refused. We were refused. We didn't have a visa with the end. So you can have mortgage. You can buy anything. Your life is temporary. You yeah, I, it's on hold. I was working for that mm. business for all those years, but I wasn't eligible to buy it. And I had the money and experience. Could move on, be mm. more successful. Mm. And even for Ash, he was getting job offers. Oh, sorry, doctor, you're overqualified, but you're on temporary visa. We can't give you a job offer. Yeah. You so know? Y- your lives are literally on it hold. It was just yeah. on hold. So, But at the end of the meeting, he said... No, everything is clear. I looked at everything. I looked at all the medias and things. And I said to him, my customers, they saying me, if you get refused this time, we're going to do a march <laughs> oh, in Victoria it. Street. That's it. We're going to do a march. <laughs> we asked the reporters to come <laughs> and be on TV. And he said, I know they would do. And mm. I said, how do you know? He said, I know how good you are in the community in Bunbury because I've been with multicultural group for yeah. a few years yeah. and I did lots of like interviews and everywhere I was just like shouting out for migrants yeah, and you know good. doing good yeah. things and a few other volunteers jobs so he said I just googled your name everywhere your name was coming yeah. out so I know how good you're for the community yeah you're a wonderful advocate for your and community. he said mm. me he said me that made me so proud he said me Australia congratulations today you're gonna have your Australian permanent residency and Australia would be honored to have you as a permanent resident oh, yeah Yay. That was amazing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it was yeah, just like, I was on tears. I was oh. on tears. And the owners and us, we were just hugging each other. And I was saying, oh, I'm so, so I'm really, really yeah. appreciating. Yeah. Thank you. And he said, no, yeah. sorry for the pain that you yeah. went through. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it was so good. Yeah. Because someone after all those years pointed out, you know. Yeah. Oh, sorry, actually. <laughs> no, it's, I, I cannot yeah. imagine, as you say, after yeah. all those years. And I said to him, oh. I was good for the community. I did all these things. And my mm. husband is a doctor. We're going to be good people. We chose Australia. It's, it is our home. I can't go back in Iran, you know, to mm. Iran. I would be definitely very richer and more successful. But we've been here for nine years. It's mm. I have my best friends here. You know, I job. Yeah. I don't know, you know, it's different. This is your new home. It is our home, and I love Bunbury, and Mm. I've been good here, you know. I said to him, I don't want to go back. (laughs) And he said, no, you're going to stay in Australia forever till you want. He was amazing. Oh, that is so beautiful. So when did that happen? Last year, 29th April. The ninth anniversary oh, of being here in Australia. Oh I know, very amazing day. Yeah, oh, isn't I the think that's our. Funny I think it's our. Yeah, it's like our lucky day or something. Mm. We have to mm. buy a lot of next year on that that's day. <laughs> yeah, make sure you do. Yeah, that's. Good. And and so, what about your your family um, back in Iran? Mm-hmm. So, uh, how often do you talk to them and? Um, have they come to visit you? Have you gone to visit them? Um, almost every day, two, three times with my mom and my mom's sister, my mom and sister. Never, ever less than this. <laughs> with my dad, the same. Like, less, maybe once. And we have, like, a group, meet, I mean, chat yeah. mm-hmm. as nice. well. Always sends the photos. They send me the photo. My brother is in UK and his family, so the same. We're all in one group. Yeah. But mostly with my parents, with my cousins, hundreds of uncles and aunties and <laughs> millions of them. <laughs> All on Instagram, Facebook, yeah. they like, I have like 500 followers, maybe in Instagram, 300 of them. They're my cousins and nieces and nephews that <laughs> I even didn't know which cousins' kids That's they are. so funny. I know. 
and but it's good to make that you more gorgeous. followers yeah. <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and they're all loving me and commenting <laughs> me oh you look gorgeous as always oh, we're proud of wonderful. you you're a successful cousin you know and still friends yeah and so family is there my parents has been in Australia have been in Australia two times and they love it yeah. they came to Paris and then when we moved down to Bombay in 2016 they came again for second time to help us to move down yeah. they stayed here for us a few months with us to set up and then as every day now has to go and back come back because he he's not still eligible to practice here Yep. So whenever he goes, my mom or his mom comes and I stay with us. Oh, nice. But the last time was 2019. I've seen them. Okay. Because after that, COVID hit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then I got stuck with the visa. With the visa and COVID situation, we couldn't go out to Australia. Because mm. we weren't Australian citizen yes. and residents, so that was the other stressful thing. Mm. Wow, yeah. If you go yeah. out, you're not Australian citizen or residents to mm. come back. Get so back we couldn't go out at all. And that was the other fear that this time, if we get refused, we were kicking out. Mm. Because you could apply for another visa, but because we were temporary, if we were going with the COVID, we never could come back. Till you get approval and the business mm. was going on, our house, our things was going on. It was so mm. stressful. Yeah. But so thank God I got it. Where do you see yourself in another five or ten years? Um, what do you hope for, for the future <laughs> now? I don't know. It's maybe weird, but as she's saying, I want you to be on something else as well as you're doing beauty. So definitely I'm opening my new shop, my own shop, some mm-hmm. sometime soon. As soon as like all the paperwork of my citizenship be done. Yeah. So and I wanted nice beauty salon with a few new unique yep. stuff unique that things. yeah, because mm-hmm. beauty especially in WA we're very far from like other states or even from mm. other countries. Mm. There are a few things like very trendy now around the world and we even haven't heard about them oh, in we'll, Australia. We'll see in them in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So that's something that I'm looking at it. I don't know about the other part. I don't like to be a politician, but as says with your background, I want you to step up to be a council member, a I don't know. Yeah. Something maybe well, like that. That's that I definitely am not interested to do parliament things. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. says, no, you're having your citizenship. You can go to parliament and you're going to be a good like politician yeah. and successful one. He says, you have the potential. But no, I really like yeah. to do something good for the community mm. as well as my being a beautician. So it could be anything. You know, I don't have any idea yet. Maybe someone, I don't know. We'll watch this space and see. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I love that. We maybe will. not. It's because it's going to be a big responsibility, definitely. Mm. But, yeah, it's something that I, I really like to do something mm. apart from my job, you know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Um, wonderful story. We really love a quote on the wisdom of women. So what's a quote that you like to remember or say? Don't escape from anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just fight. Because <laughs> when I say it, I even like it emotional. But I say sometimes you get to that stage that you get to the end of the road that you say, oh, it's just taking apart, you know. But you shouldn't give up. I'm saying whatever happens, we shouldn't give up. Hope, you know, mm-hmm. having a hope and don't give up. Especially as a woman for us it's always harder you know it's so hard to fight you get broken you get emotional and we have a small shoulders to tolerate the things but I think we're very stronger you know and have always look at your own potential and never give up Mm. yeah (laughs) you've proven that one you never gave up (laughs) Thank you, honey. Thank you. I tried my best. Yeah. You did a good job. Thank you. And thank you for coming on. Now, if you have been affected by any of the topics discussed in this conversation, we will have links below and links for more show information and to subscribe. Mm. Thank and you. Thank you, Eddie. Mm. Always remember, 
every day. You are remarkable. <laughs>